in front of you. Um, just check, put my video on, sorry. There we go. So there is two options that are uh, in front of you for consideration. So as you have heard uh, through public forum, um, and also as you're aware that uh, Sarah did um, provide her resignation to the Chief Exec on the 9th of October. So that ha does mean that it's within the 12 months leading up to the election, meaning there won't be a by-election. And so that means there are two options in front of the board in terms of how you want to proceed. One of them, one option is to leave that position vacant, um, and the other is to nominate an appointment for that vacancy. Um, for both options, uh, depending on which one you go with, they will both be, um, the decision would be given public notice immediately following this meeting. If you do choose to appoint someone to that position, uh, a decision needs to be made or it needs to be resolved on um, within the next 30 days. So that would mean at your next business meeting in November, uh, you would be officially appointing that person and that person would also undertake their statutory declaration. Um, and from the 16th of November, they would be effectively an elected member. There is, I, I think also mentioned in the public forum, um, there is a small amount of criteria that needs to be considered and with the report uh, there's some additional areas that you might want to consider, um, but ultimately it is, they need to be 18 years of age, a New Zealand citizen and on the electoral roll. So um, I've got nothing further to add unless there's any particular questions and I just note that hopefully Warwick is also on this meeting and he will be able to support any more technical questions. Right, are there any questions from members? There appear to be no questions, a very clear report. Thank you, Trina. Um, I understand Graham has a resolution to move. Thank you. To move a resolution. I move that the Waitemata local board resolve to appoint Glenn DeFry to fill the vacancy until the next training. What a the... load of nonsense. Excuse oh, me. Be point of order. Could you, yes, point of order. If people can't keep quiet, they'll have be muted. Go ahead, Graham. Resolve to appoint Glenn DeFry to fill the vacancy until the next training election, which takes place on 8 October 2022, pursuant to section 1173 of the local electoral act and that Glenda Fryer be sworn in as board member at the local board's business meeting on 16th November 2021. To note that the board have selected Glenda Fryer because the Act specifically provides that the board may make an appointment in these circumstances and the substantial and complex nature of the work and decisions facing the Waitemata local board over the next year make it desirable to appoint a person with appropriate ex expertise and experience to the board. It is democratic to appoint a person who stood in the last election for the Waitemata local board and Glenn DeFry, clearly being the highest polling unsuccessful candidate at the local board at the last board elections, receiving 6,295 votes, has demonstrated substantial public support to be appointed a Waitemata local board member. Glenn DeFry, having extensive experience in local government and specifically of the Auckland Council as an elected member, having been chair of the Albert Eden Community Board and Auckland City Councilor and deputy chair of the Albert Eden Local Board. Glenn DeFry, having governance experience locally as having been chair of the Auckland and Takapuna Housing Allocation Committee, been or being on the Auckland Business Development Council, the Unitech Council, the New Zealand Dental Council, the Ponsonby University of the Third Age and the board of the Auckland Community Housing Trust and that we resolve that the outcome of the appointment be publicly advertised after the report and resolutions have been restated. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there a seconder for that resolution? Alex Bonham. Alex Bonham seconds. Oh, All right, you yeah. may speak, Graham. Thank you. So the decision framework for this appointment, I feel is- This is utter nonsense. Uh, point of order. Utter nonsense. Point of order. That person speaks again, they'll be muted. Cannot, we're having a debate at the moment. I've had the opportunity in public forum to express your views. Thank you. So, to the I look forward to. Carry on, Graham. 
There are two decisions in this decision framework. The first is, is a seventh member required for the local board? And the second is, what is the next most democratic way to fill the vacancy? So that first question, the workload, um, does it uh, require us to have a second, seventh member? In my view, it does. Uh, this opinion was confirmed by Josh Doubtfire in his, uh, in his public uh, forum item. I thank Josh. Uh, there are economic development uh, positions, Parnell Business Has he ever run the business? Excuse me. Point of order. Point of order. That person will now be muted. Harry Head Graham. I think I should leave. Oh, for God. You've resigned. You've, you, you, this is no longer your position to speak. Okay. Graham. I'll take my approach. Okay. Carry ahead, Carry ahead, Graham. Is she could climb on? <laughs> okay, so to, to not appoint someone to be ignored the contribution to a former member, Trotman, who did uh, so much of this work and it needs to continue, the relationships need to continue with those uh, liaison groups. So we do need a seventh member. So that moves on to my second question, which is what is the most democratic way to appoint someone? Now, were the resignation submitted two weeks earlier, a by-election would have been triggered, which would have allowed democracy to choose the new member. As Gail Baldock questioned, what would have happened if we went to a by-election? Now, based on the 2019 election, a City Vision member might have won, uh, but with a plurality and not a majority. Now, in my view, we need a democratic proxy, and the uh, results of the October 2019 election can be used as That's a proxy. Great. Oh, Point of order. Could that may person I, be muted? May I continue? Carry on, Graham. Now, there are absolutely downsides to the first-past-the-post system. I recognise that, and um, as Keith McConnell points out, it's not a proportional system, it's not a representative system, and I, I agree it is, uh, it, it is not representative. However, it is not up to us as elected board members to change that system. Should there be a, a review of it, I would gladly give feedback that suggests that it switches to a proportional system, but that is not what we have. And I don't think it's democratic for us as board members to uh, choose some Someone who happens to uh, bring X, no, X skills or, or views to the board. I believe that democracy is the only process that we can use in this, and that is uh, to appoint the uh, next polling, uh, highest polling unsuccessful candidate. Uh, after all, what would happen if, say, the Iraq, someone on the Iraqi board stepped down? Would, would they be expected to appoint someone that provides? Uh, uh, diversity. I, I, I don't know how they would react, but I expect they would uh, appoint someone from their own party, uh, regardless of, of what would happen. Now, uh, should Glenda not wish to take the position, I believe it should be offered to Genevieve Brown and then to Roger Burton and so on down the list of uh, candidate polling mm -hmm. until someone accepts. I'd also like to thank those members of the public who have put themselves forward for this position. I do appreciate it, and your, I appreciate your ongoing interest in the board and its activities, and I encourage all of you to run at next year's elections. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Alex, do you want to speak now? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you. Um, I'd like to echo Graham's points, though I would also say that there absolutely is a place to appoint somebody who does bring skills that are needed on the board. And so in the interim between Sarah's resignation um, and now, have been thinking very hard about what these skills should be and have very much appreciated um, Josh, Keith, Gail, Alan, um, all putting their hands up and also other members of the community who have had tremendous skills in housing um, and business um, too. And, and I hope, as Graham does, that uh, they will stand uh, for the next election. Um, Linda has the skills that we need at this time um, are experience in community housing, in inequity, um, and in workers' rights, the R's, these are really major issues. Um, 
And also in business, Glenda has had experience of the economic portfolio. But I should also add that we have two business owners on the board, as well as members who have considerable experience working in businesses. Um, so it's not that we do not have a business voice already, but someone with real experience of the council will be hugely advantageous at this time. And one of the reasons it's difficult to appoint someone who has not got that experience is because we're all working from home and training is very difficult to deliver at this time. And we do need someone to represent the community and to get out there um, and to, to get on with this job as soon as possible. Um, and Glenda brings these things. So this is not a party political decision. I'm from the Green Party anyway, but I appreciate what Glenda can bring. And I'm looking forward to her joining the board if she chooses to accept this nomination. Thank you. Uh, speaking for myself, um, the we did really have four four serious options, which were to not fill the vacancy. Secondly, to appoint the highest polling unsuccessful candidate. Thirdly, to appoint someone else who didn't have that sort of electoral evidence uh, of popular support, or to defer the decision and. Um, and really, when we looked at each of those, um, I, I don't think deferring the decision is a good idea. I think people need um, certainty and to, um, if there is somebody suitable available, we should be prepared to appoint them. And I think that one of the things that this has been an effective board, that in spite of what? Sarah said, people clearly want to be on and to contribute to the decision making of. And, and I think, uh, I do thank also, also thank Alan and Keith and Josh and Gail uh, for offering themselves both to the electors last time and to this board now to serve with us. So the, the idea that this is company that people would not want to keep and that it is intrinsically unpleasant work is not valid. People are keen to take it on. And it is important, uh, complex work with a lot to do. If Sarah had resigned two days earlier, we would have had a by-election because the parliamentarians recognise that you, that place needs to be filled. Um, and clearly, Two days difference, um, I think, in our case, with the complex and substantive nature of the work, the place, the position does need to be filled. And as Alan reminded us, because of COVID, there's now legislation that provides if COVID is um, as rampant uh, next October, September, October, as it is now, the elections would be postponed and this board would serve a longer term. So I think it's really important that we appoint to this. We've got seven business associations and the rules of the business improvement districts is that people um, can only uh, serve, that each business district needs to have a different person as their person on it. So we would have had a potential problem there. And then there are a number of really busy residence associations. Uh, there's the Auckland Domain, um, there's the Auckland City Central Advisory Board. We need another person. And I, as I agree with, with Graham that the best guide uh, as to the democratic way to do it is to appoint the person who received the most votes, provided that they had the experience and skills, which almost certainly they would have, whatever party they'd stood for, if there was the next unsuccessful person. And Glenda, um, I've worked with on the Auckland Council's elected member. She is smart, hardworking, dedicated and principled. And, and she will be a good member of this board. Are there any other speakers? If there's not, I'll put the resolution. All those in favour will say aye. 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 Any to the contrary? That's carried. Thank you very much.